Okay, so last week we started, to, or we finished talking about adding and subtracting mixed numbers. So before we go into multiplying and dividing, let's review for a little bit what we learned. So when we add mixed numbers, 2 and 1 fourth plus 3 and 2 fifths okay so we're gonna find a common denominator between 4 and 5 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16 4 times 5 is 20 all right, so now let's do 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 10, 15, 20. So there's our common denominator. That's the, that's the least common multiple. So our common denominator is 20. So we're going to multiply 4 by 5 to get 20. So we're going to multiply the top by 5. 5 times 1 is 5. Down here we're going to multiply the bottom by 4 to get 20. We're going to multiply the top by 4. 2 times 4 is 8. So we add the numerators. Eight, 5 plus 8 is 13. We keep the denominator. And then 2 plus 3 is 5. So our answer is 5 and 13 over 20. And that's the simplest that we can get it. There's no reducing or anything. Subtraction is much the same with the added caveat of borrowing. And in addition, you have the added caveat of borrowing if need be. So now we're going to look at multiplying mixed numbers. Now, multiplying fractions was pretty easy. In my opinion, easier than um, adding and subtracting them. However, when you're dealing with mixed numbers, there is one thing to remember. Before we can multiply, we have to make that mixed number into an improper fraction. And we're going to go over how to do that as a reminder right now. So, keeping with 2 and 1 fourth. Times three and one third. Pretty simple. Okay, so if you remember the way we turn mixed numbers into improper fractions, we multiply here and then we add here. So times and plus. Four times two is eight. Eight plus one is nine. So we put our 9 as our numerator and keep our 4 as our denominator. Now we do the same thing over here. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 over 3. Alright. So before we get into how to make this simpler on ourselves, we're just going to do it straight across. So 9 times 10 is 90. And 4 times 3 is 12. Now, 9 times out of 10, almost always, we're going to have to simplify these. So here we're, we are going to have to simplify. Both numbers are even. You can tell by the last digit. So we're going to simplify by 2. 
What is that? So two by two on top and two on bottom. 90 divided by two is 45. And 12 divided by two is six. Now we need to convert it back to a mixed number because that's what we started with. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to put 45 under the house and six outside the house. So we're going to say to ourselves, how many times will six go into 45? And the answer there would be seven. Now seven times six is 42. And we subtract and get three. Now the remainder, three, goes over the six. So the answer here is seven and three sixths. But we're not quite finished because three sixths, if you remember, that's, a, that's one of our common fractions that we reduce seven and one half. So that's our final answer, seven and one half. Now, there is no real way to check this. Well, I'm sure that there is, but the, the thing that I look at in your original problem, two times three is six. And 6 is 1 away from 7. So that's likely the right answer. So the, the biggest thing that you need to know with multiplying fractions is how to make that mixed number into an improper fraction. And like you saw at the end of the problem, you also need to know how to make that improper fraction back into a mixed number. So we're going to look at another one. We're going to keep it pretty simple today. We're going to look at... 4 and 1 half times 1 and 2 fifths. All right. So first thing we do, we multiply down here and then we add up here. So 4 times 2 is 8 and 8 plus 1 is 9. So our first fraction becomes 9 over 2 times 5 times 5 times 1 is 5 5 plus 2 is 7 so times 7 over 5 So this is going to be one of those ones I can go I can already see it that it's going to be there's not going to be a whole lot to do with. So let's multiply straight across. 9 times 7 is 63. And 2 times 5 is 10. So the way the way I do this without, without even having to set up your division problem is say how many times can 10 go into 60? And 10 times 6 is 60. So 10 can go into 63 six times. And then, oh, 10 times 6 is 60. So you have 3 left over. And that 3 that you have left over goes over the 10. So your final answer is three, 6 and 3 tenths. And like I said earlier, Ch checking this would be a little more difficult than checking plain addition subtraction, not dealing with fractions. So what I would say, 4 times 1 
equals four. Is four close to six? I would say relatively. So we've got a pretty good estimate of whether we've got it right. Now, what's close? I would say within three either way. So if you went up to nine, because six plus three is nine, or if you went down to three, then I think you made a pretty good you you solved the problem pretty pretty correctly pretty accurately if you have less than three or more than nine then you probably need to check your work so we'll be working on dividing and multiplying mixed numbers all week this is just your first taste of that but we're going to work some more on this topic and then on our next topic, which is dividing these mixed numbers. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Peace.